Oh, hey. Sorry, I was just oiling my beard. Uh, you're here about the best games? Come with me. So, Guts of Glory is a mouth-cramming, deck-spewing, competitive card game for two to four players set in the post of pocket. You're here for the video games, aren't you? Twenty thirteen was a bonkers year in video games for me. While finding time around having a one year old in the house got a bit easier than last year, the majority of my game time was late at night when I'm likely to be a bit tired, making it difficult for me to actually get into something. My PlayStation 3 broke, but I did get a 3DS and Wii U, and those are responsible for this being the first year since doing these videos that a non PC game has made an appearance on my list. Lord knows I didn't get the chance to play all the games, but here's my favorite ones from 2013 that I did play. Bioshock Infinite After finding Bioshock 2 disappointing, I was ready to return somewhere in the Bioshock universe, and Infinite was just the right vehicle for that. The story, while disjointed at times and a bit dissonant from all the shooting that you do, is beautifully over the top and did leave me with mouth agape at the end. I just have to wonder with how easy it was for Booker to down some vigors, why everyone you fight didn't have superpowers. Animal Crossing New Leaf This was my first Animal Crossing game. Having no interest previously, I somehow got caught up in the hubbub, grabbed the eShop version, and before I knew it, I was checking in on the town of Old News every single day. It acted as a moment to relax and enjoy the simple things. Animal Crossing has to be the biggest surprise for me in 2013. I had no idea I would enjoy it as much as I did. Shadow Warrior I never thought we would have seen a new Shadow Warrior game, but Devolver Digital are some crazy bastards. It's got possibly the best first-person melee combat system to date. It makes you feel like just enough of a badass without making the game too easy on you. It feels like a single-player version of Quake 3 Deathmatch, and that is rad as hell. Eldritch. Do not be deceived by the lo-fi graphics in Eldritch. Cthulhu can still drive you insane even at only 400 polygons. You can run a gun and toss dynamite to your heart's content, or you can sneak around setting traps and ironically stabbing cultists in the back with a dagger. There are plenty of tools at your disposal in Eldritch. It's dishonored in a Lovecraftian universe with roguelike trappings. The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Starting up this Zelda game felt like a return to childhood for me. Not because I played Zelda games as a kid, I didn't in fact, but because I just got absorbed into it. No distractions. I plunked down in my living room under a blanket in front of a big window with the snow falling outside and just played. It feels condensed and focused and never stops being enjoyable. It's exactly what I wanted out of a Zelda game. Kentucky Route Zero. Do you like Twin Peaks? Do you love David Lynch's hair? Even if you don't, you might definitely want to play Kentucky Route Zero. Visually, it's the most stunning game this year, with the Swapper coming in at a close second. At its heart, it's a point-and-click adventure, but the surrealist setting and how you choose and guide the story make for possibly the most mysterious and mesmerizing experience of 2013. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons Sometimes, it's the little details that are king. Throwing a bucket of water onto an adult to wake him up, throwing a ball through a hoop with a random stranger, laughing at the bully who just got his when a harmless dog chased him up some barrels. Brothers is lovely storytelling accomplished without words. I'm a little brother myself, so this game kind of holds a special place in my heart. The Swapper. Everything you see in the game was actually molded from clay before being photographed and put into the game. So it's basically the Neverhood, but in space? Maybe not. Based on visuals alone, the Swapper is deserving of its place on this list. But it also had some truly challenging puzzles. It's the kind of game that I couldn't stop thinking about when I put it down for the night. It's beautiful, thematic, and I was not prepared for that ending. Having only received my Wii U for Christmas, Super Mario 3D World being on this list from such a short time played speaks to its greatness. It's just such an absolute pleasure to play across the board. The little details like dancing landscapes in the overworld create an immense amount of charm. And don't get me started on that dust trail when you start running. 
God, I love that dust trail when you start running. Gone Home. In a world where video games are an escape, Gone Home places you in the middle of real family issues. I'm sick of the is it a game question slash argument at this point. Gone Home's effect on me could not have been achieved using any other medium. It had to be a game, it had to be me going through and uncovering the history and story of this family at my own pace, piece by piece. The Fulbright Company has set the bar so high for interactive fiction, and I hope have helped to usher in an era of more and more game developers dipping their toes into experiences like this. So there you have it, my favorite games that came out in 2013. Now if you'll excuse me, since the games have stopped at least for a little while, I'm gonna try to go back and play what I missed.